So you're a new hunter or a young hunter and you decide you want to get a trail camera. Where do you start? When you start looking at different advertisements on social media, you walk into a box store, you go to someone's website, you read trail camera reviews, you're overwhelmed with marketing terms, verbiage, buzzwords, and a lot of it probably doesn't make sense to you if you're unfamiliar with these terms. So this video is all about trail camera lingo, uh, terminology, what you need to know, what's important, and what is just a marketing ploy. So we're gonna tackle 10 things, 10, not five, 10, 10 things that you need to know when you're looking at purchasing your, your trail camera. And that is one megapixels, two trigger speed, three flash type, four battery life, five detection range, six flash range, seven trigger delay, eight recovery times, nine camera modes, and then 10 your warranty. So number one, megapixels. In this industry, megapixels is one of the things that is most often stuck on a box or marketed the most. And generally when people see numbers, megapixel numbers, they think the higher the megapixel number, the better the camera is, the better the pictures are going to be from that camera. And that's the way when you start looking at DSLR cameras and different things with professional videography and photography equipment, a lot of times that's the case. With trail cameras, that is not the case. Buying trail cameras based on the amount of megapixels that are marketed on a box or a blog or a camera review is absolutely, it's a lie and you shouldn't buy into it. It's a buzzword. And that's the case because those numbers are inflated through interpolation. So most cameras uh, in today's marketplace are using somewhere around a three megapixel image sensor, which produces native HD video at uh, or 1080p at 30 frames per second. And what people do with those three native megapixels, they artificially create additional pixels through interpolation. Let's say 10 times, and then all of a sudden, instead of having a three megapixel picture, you have a 30 megapixel picture. So they put that on the box and that bigger number gets people to buy their product. So it's a big myth. We've done a whole separate video on that myth. We have a blog and also uh, a podcast episode. So for more in-depth detail, make sure you check that content out. So the second thing we want to talk about is trigger speed. What is the trigger speed of a trail camera? The trigger, trigger speed of a trail camera is the time it takes to wake up from a resting period and start the process of taking a photo. So, you know, trigger speed is one of the things that's probably marketed most. Um, and even for with people who have ran camera for a number of years, they technically don't know or understand what trigger speed is. They think if they're getting a blurry photo, it's because of a slow trigger speed. And that's not the case. We have, you know, several other pieces of content on, on that uh, if you want to you know educate yourself a little more but the trigger speed of a camera is simply the time it takes for it to wake up from its resting period and it start the process of taking a photo so today's marketplace almost all cameras are sub one second trigger speed uh, a half second trigger speed like a 0.5 second trigger speed should get the job done if the camera's designed well um, in pretty much every application or every every scenario so when you start to look at uh, higher price tag cameras you know, don't fall for the quarter second trigger speed or 0 0.0001 second trigger speed or some, um, you know, again, some buzzword that they're, or buzz number that they're using to market um, and to get you to buy your buy their product. So the third thing we want to talk about is flash type. And this is a, a little more non-subjective. Today's marketplace, there are three basic uh, different types of flash. You have what is considered black flash or invisible flash. You have uh, red flash or low glow, and then you have a white flash or incandescent flash cameras. The black flash, invisible flash camera is gonna use a 940 nanometer flash unit. And the important thing there is it is invisible to the human eye and it is invisible to most animals. So when that camera goes off at night, you're not gonna see a flash. With a red glow or low glow camera, an IR camera, it's using, um, a ball that is lower on the UV spectrum, uh, like around 640 nanometers. And that is going to give off a red glow, uh, which in our opinion is probably the worst flash type you can use. But that red glow is visible to not only humans, but it's also visible to am animals. And it's really something that's 
non-native to an environment. You know, animals aren't used to seeing red flashes or red glows at night. So uh, a lot of times it's going to alarm those animals or cause them to act with caution when they see that go off. The last type is white flash, incandescent flash cameras, which is, you know, similar to what most people think about a, a regular camera flash. In low light or dark scenarios, the flash goes off, boom, you see a big flash of uh, white light camera takes a picture and those nighttime images are in color because of that white flash. So that's another important thing to note with your nighttime pictures between these different flash units. A white flash or incandescent flash is going to give you colored nighttime photos while red flash and black flash or invisible flash are going to give you uh, black and white photos. The fourth thing we want to talk about is battery life. And oftentimes, you know, we get the question, how long do the batteries last? And that's really a non-subjective non -subjective question because we can give the exact power consumption numbers for every mode, uh, the resting current, and, you know, that doesn't change. That's always consistent. But when, when you start to look at marketing materials from uh, different camera companies, what's on boxes or what's ran on ads, some companies are going to give, say, batteries are going to last two years. They're not technically lying, but what they're giving you is what the resting capacity or what the capacity is, the battery life of that camera. When that camera is not taking a picture and it's just sitting in the woods at rest, sure, it's going to last, you know, two years because it's only drawing, you know, 0 0.204 watt seconds um, from those batteries. So, again, the battery life is something people or companies are going to market in years. They're not going to give you actual power consumption numbers because... They're not going to say the daytime power consumption is, you know, every time it takes a picture, it's drawing, you know, 0.18 amps and then, you know, figuring out the voltage of that circuit and giving watt seconds. They're not going to do that. Um, so they're going to market that in years. But just think about that when um, when you're looking at those marketing materials. The fifth thing we're going to talk about is detection range and understanding the, how a trail camera works and the detection circuit is kind of a more in-depth topic which again, we have a separate content for you guys can check that out to educate yourself a little more actually how trail cameras work. But the detection range of a camera is essentially how far away from the camera it can be triggered. And, you know, with Exodus and the things that we market, we are very conservative with all of our numbers because we don't want to give you a number and then have you set that camera up and then it not work at that effective range. So if, a lot of times if we're marketing a camera and say it's, you know, that it, the detection range is 60 feet. A lot of times, you know, we're giving ourselves like a 10 foot buffer there. A lot of the other marketing materials across the board are going to go the other way. They're going to more than likely pad those stats um, or give you best case optimal scenarios where that camera is going to be triggered at 100 feet. Our cameras will be, you know, we've had our cameras triggered at 150 feet when a big yellow school bus goes by a road. So um, you have to think about um, how the cameras are triggering, what they're taking pictures of. And really the only way to do that is to really buy a camera and do a physical walk test to see what that effective range is on that camera. So again, when you're looking at those marketing materials and buzzwords and buzz numbers from these, um, from, from companies, I guess, just don't buy into all the hype 100%. The sixth thing, um, we want to talk about is the flash range. So we went over flash types, the flash range. The flash range of a camera is how far the light is emitted from that flash. So, um, you know, without getting too te technical, when you start looking at different flash types, it's going to have an effect on your fl uh, flash range. Uh, the flash range of a camera should match its detection range because if your camera is detecting out to 100 feet but only has an 80 foot flash range, if it's being triggered, well, that full um, distance isn't going to be illuminated. So you're likely not going to see what's out there at a, at hundred feet. So, um, make sure when you're looking at this specific specification that you're actually looking at that flash range and making sure it's, you know, matching that advertised detection range as well. The seventh thing we want to talk about is the trigger delay of a camera and your trigger delay is a setting inside of your camera that you can adjust. All of our cameras are basically customizable, um, you know, from the Exodus Trek down to five seconds all the way to, uh, you know, 
10 minutes or wh however you want to have that thing set up. And likewise with the other cameras as well. But your trigger delay is essentially a setting inside your camera where you can program that camera to not be active. So let's use the example of a trigger delay of 30 seconds. So you have that camera set up in a static environment and you only want to take pictures every 30 seconds. You change that trigger delay setting to 30 seconds. And after that camera takes a picture, it has a 30 second time span for that to lapse before it is active and able to take another picture. That's really all there is with the trigger delay. Again, you can, you can change that, you know, customize that to kind of suit your use case or what your, your the objective of that trail camera set is and change that to kind of fit your needs. But it's important to understand what, what the trigger delay is. The eighth thing we want to talk about is recovery time. And this is something that is not really marketed and a lot of companies won't tell you. But a recovery time of a trail camera is essentially the time it takes from that camera from when it is writing the taken photo to your SD card that it takes to become active again. So a lot of people get trigger delay and recovery time confused but the recovery time like for the exodus lift 2 is one second the recovery time for the trek is five seconds so those specifications are going to have to do with hardware and it's important to know what that recovery time is because oftentimes it's going to be different between modes so if you're running in photo mode a lot of times the hardware in that camera is going to allow it to recover faster in photo mode than it is in video mode and then at the same point in time it's important to know that recovery time because more than likely your trigger delay can't be set any lower than that. So if you have a camera that has a 10 second or 15 second recovery time, which they, they're out there. If you have a camera with a 15 second recovery time in video mode and you want to run your camera with a five second trigger delay, well, it's not going to work. It's not going to work like that because it's going to take 15 seconds for that camera to recover to be able to take another photo. So the shortest amount of time you could possibly run your trigger delay is your recovery time. So, it's important to, uh, important to know those numbers. The ninth thing we want to talk about are mode options. All of our cameras have four basic modes. Photo mode, video mode, hybrid mode, and time lapse. We run that across the board, across all of our models. There are models and manufacturers out there that will limit the modes in specific cameras. There's modes that will only do photo and video. There are cameras that will only do time lapse. So it's important to know what modes are coming in what camera and how you think you're going to use them in those specific modes. So just to recap, photo mode, trail camera's basically just going to take a, a picture. That's it, very plain and simple. Likewise with video mode. If you have it set up in video mode, the camera's gonna take a video. Hybrid mode. Um, hybrid mode is a mode that you can take photo and video. So the camera is essentially going to, when it's first triggered, take a photo and then as that photo is written to the card, it's gonna to proceed to take a video. In time-lapse mode, time-lapse mode is a mode where you can take photos at set intervals. So let's say you wanted to do uh, document a construction project or in hunting terms, if you wanted to watch a field, um, like a scan mode, you could program a camera to take 10 second pictures. So you can set the camera up in time-lapse mode change your time-lapse interval to 10 seconds and that camera is going to take a picture every 10 seconds so it's important really to know um, if you're buying a camera what modes are available on it and the last thing we want to talk about is warranty so that's um, that's one of our big things here at Ex exodus we've been five years ago when we started this company we founded it on building products that last and solving that longevity problem it's important to look at you know the warranty and what the exclusions or inclusions are included in that warranty we're all blue collar people um, and when we're spending our money we want to get the most out of it so when you're buying a product you're spending a hundred dollars on a product with a one-year warranty or spending a hundred dollars on a product that has a two-year warranty if all these specifications are equal and one has a five-year warranty one has a two-year warranty then it's pretty easy um, easy buying decision when you start to weigh those warranty warranty factors in again five-year warranty we're the best in the best in the business at that so guys we hope this uh we hope this trail camera lingo video helps we hope that uh you guys learned a couple things we hope we're helping educate new trail camera users and new hunters 
We want to get people into the sport. We want to get people to use trail cameras. It's a ton of fun, regardless of using them for deer season, hobbyist photography. Um, you know, running trail cameras through the year is almost a, you know, a pastime in itself. But if you have any questions on this specific video, new hunting questions, anything about trail cameras, anything about hunting, we'd be glad to answer. Just leave a comment below. If you want to see more of these trail camera 101 basic videos, be sure to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell notification for us.